ほらこのドレスなんだけど。<laughs> well, there's one thing you really can't get away with these days. This episode dopin' with a recap of episode 1, which almost made me think I was reviewing a precure, but then we quickly got some new stuff, as we saw where another black light landed in the mountains. Sure enough, Peach detected the recipient of the light, motivating the girls into action. And by action, I mean going on a. <laughs> Enjoy having that stuck in your head for the next few weeks. I can't get out of mine. And while I did kind of agree with Ken that they were goofing off, they were also having such a good time and the animation was so charming that I couldn't get upset. And it's not as though they just forgot about their job, as they quickly found their target, which the title card already gave away. Yep, this was the anime version of Fuzzy Lumpkins, who arguably came the closest to matching with the original in terms of design and personality. Get off of my property! <laughs> So interestingly, both versions were significantly different than the very original one that appeared in the one cartoon pilot short. Yeah, anyone remember how Fuzzy was the first PPG villain, not counting Craig's original college project, and how he was a meat obsessed hillbilly who was actually intelligent as he managed to invent a gun that could turn anything into meat, also that he could try to. I will eat! Townsville. Cannibalism for the kitties. This version of the character thankfully didn't take it that far, though he also kind of lacked the berserker rage of the later version, as he was pretty laid back even when they tried to return him to normal. It didn't work because... Dude, just admit that you forgot to charge it last night. Still, he didn't seem like a threat, so the girls decided to just leave him alone and have their picnic. Only problem was that this fuzzy had an additional gimmick in that he liked to mark his property. The YouTube copyright system in a nutshell. Thus, pretty much everything was up for his literal grabs. With their picnic spoiled, they decided to call it a day, but the big pink hillbilly wasn't done. Granted, he didn't go right into his game of property tag, but instead did what a lot of old school Sentai villains used to do and broke into a musical number. Nobody, 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 that is a game. Oh. Honestly, I would normally be against a character being softened up this much, but at the same time, just listen to this and tell me you aren't a slice bit charmed. Hell, he even took the time to gently move an old man aside and gave a fan an autograph. This is a fun and kind of campy version of the character. Man, it didn't take away from him being a competent antagonist as he managed to walk through the girls with mostly just his brute strength. Eventually, just like the original, he also tried to take City Hall, though not through an election. Good, because I still really don't want to have to do political jokes right now. Though sadly, this version of the bear wasn't gonna frog splash him anytime soon, but fortunately, Miss Belm's body would be just as effective. And to be fair, the original Fuzzy was also a bit of a horny pink bastard. Scoot your birdie little self in there! Charming. The girls took advantage of this and sent him back to the mountains, ending the first half of the episode. With that, we roll right into the introduction of another antagonist, and no it's not this cat, though she does kind of look like the Mark Hamill kitty. Still, she and her master Himiko were both hit by the black light. <laughs> oh no, some of Rekha from last week rubbed off on Shido and now she's turned into this! Not kidding, same beer and everything. Though at least this character isn't quite as problematic. <laughs> Still, like many rich kids, she wanted to show off her parents' money, and thankfully it didn't work, as her class was more interested in the PPGZ. Ironically, she then turned to the girls for attention, of course not knowing about their secret identities. Legit, one of the most relatable moments in all of anime, for me at least. I mean, I spent whole semesters not even really learning the names of half of the kids in my class. Her frustrations only grew worse, as the girls unintentionally committed the greatest of sins, and ended up stealing the time slot from her favorite soap opera. All of this, plus a screech from her cat Sapphire, ended up triggering Himiko's transformation into Princess. 
Yeah, if you couldn't tell by her civilian design, this is the anime's version of Princess Morbux. Though, unlike Fuzzy, she does have a lot more differences when compared against her original. First and foremost was that she was already superpowered, not requiring any additional tech or even gifts from Santa Claus, though she would still use the former as we'll see in just a minute. Second, while she was still a rich brat like the original, it was nowhere near the same sociopathic level and thankfully volume. I wanna be a in fact, there's more backstory behind Himiko's need for attention, but that's for another day. For now, we do know that a lot of this was set off by the very existence of our protagonist, sort of making for a Batman-Joker situation of the heroes creating their own villain. It's obviously nowhere near as extreme here, just a bit of a pay squabble at the end of the day, but it's still an interesting trope when it's done right regardless. And yes, this was also kind of the case for the original too, though I get the feeling more bucks would have become a villain regardless. Anyway, since Princess was a split personality for Himiko, I'll stick with calling her that. Regardless, this little Miss Jekyll still had the near unlimited funds of her family to create a knockoff Tetsujin. From there, I guess you could say she tried to pull a major man from the original series where she tried to make herself look like a superheroine. But between the red hair and the giant robot, I'm actually thinking more Syndrome. And just like him, she ended up making her robot too strong, prompting the girls into action. She still tried to deal with it, but eventually just broke the controls and also accidentally revealed her plans to the girls, leading to one of Momoko's best lines of the series. <laughs> And yeah, you might have noticed, but the animation here was actually really good, not just by this show's standards, but arguably competing with some of Splash Star's better stuff at the time. Key animation for this episode was done by Yoshikazu Tomita. A very talented animator, probably best known for his work on One Piece, though for this series, he stuck mostly with his specialty, which was anime mecha. Yeah, they seem to be his bread and butter, as you can see in his work for Gundam Build Fighters. He has a strong sense for making big metal machines feel powerful with very impactful, yet hard-hitting fights. So I guess it was only appropriate that he had a name that almost sounds like it could be an alias for the father of Gundam. Could he be... Nah, not crazy enough. But yeah, I look forward to hearing his name a few more times in these reviews, especially when we get to a certain mech for the girls. Anyway, they dealt with both the knockoff Tetsujin and Princess when she tried to take them all out. From there, they returned to normal, as well as back to her house. Jeez, you think a family as rich as this would at least have some security? With that, the episode ended with Himiko forgetting about the previous night, but not her grudge against the girls. This was a very fun introduction episode for a couple more members of the show's rogues gallery based off of characters from the original. And yeah, while I did draw a lot of comparisons, that was more because I'm a bit of a nerd for the original, but truth be told, there are differences between this show's versions of Fuzzy and Princess that do make them unique. This was especially the case for the latter, who will get a lot more development as this show goes on. Once again, this episode was co-written by pre-gear writer Isamu Yama and another writer named Naoki Koga who I can't say much about. But yeah, while I'm not sure how much he wrote exactly, this does feel like another time when he showed his love for Otoksatsu as this version of Fuzzy, while still having the property obsession of the original, was also written like a Sentai villain, both being fairly threatening and yet really fun. Don't get me wrong, I still love the overly violent original, but this version and the episode he was introduced in were quite charming. All of that said though, yeah, the real me of this episode was definitely the latter princess half. Himiko had already made an early cameo, so we had an idea of what her character was like, which was definitely a rich brat like the original. But as we saw here, she's not a full on evil sociopath like Morbox, who I'll be honest, kind of annoyed me at times. She did genuinely care about others like her cat, and as I said, her developing an evil side was more of a fault of the girl sticking out and subsequently ignoring her, though for justified reasons as they were tired. To say the least, this plotline was handled better than it was in Amazing Spider-Man 2. As a result, we could sympathize with her, but still find her to be a very entertaining villainess with her delusions of grandeur. It also kind of felt like she had purposely funded the animation for her own debut, as this was honestly the best animation the show has had so far, taking full advantage of the more cartoony nature of the show's art style. Himiko slash Princess is one of my favorite alternate takes on OG character, and definitely one worth looking forward to in the future. 
On the note of princesses, work on my gold princess review is going well, and now that I think about it, I'm also going to be talking about evil royalty in that show too. And in case you are wondering, part 2 will cover episodes 13 through 26, so all the Twilight Saga, plus a little bit of the fallout of that. Look forward to it, and until then though, Feral Fanami friends, and um, he may be a bit of a possessive monster, but he knows how to play a good tune.